Yeah, Jim, uh, it is an empty site right here, but as you just were talking about with our colleague Keith Jones, some activity, a flurry of activity on the other side. I want to spin you back around and see what we're looking at here. Uh, take a look, uh, Bruce. We've got just an empty street with this curfew in place here now as behind us the National Guard stand prepared. And if you look over there, you'll see uh, we've got stuff boarded up here in, uh, in Center City. Businesses boarded up, banks boarded up. Uh, and that is in some cases because of the looting that happened last night and in some cases out of precaution because businesses don't know uh, what is going to happen next and they are preparing ahead of time just like these officers, uh, both Philadelphia police officers and National Guard officers are preparing for what might come next. We spent the day today uh, in another part of town just blocks from here really talking to business owners about what it has been like to uh, see the looting of their stores and uh, their fellow business owner stores and what happens next for them. A big question that they are trying to figure out. Take a look. This was not supposed to be how City Blue started the day with broken glass and more uncertainty about reopening. Nobody here is going to go back to work this Friday when we thought we were going back to work. After the coronavirus pandemic shut the doors of stores like this one, looters busted in, taking merchandise and putting a damper on reopening plans. Everybody's like, you know, out here, and, oh, you guys have insurance, you guys have insurance. Insurance may cover the sneakers that, that, are, that are gone, but I don't know if that's going to cover rebuilding all of these locations. It's for sure not going to cover the fact that now our people are going to be out of work. Brian Nadav, whose father started City Blue in the 80s, says protesting injustice in the country is needed. But I personally don't really see a connection to the message of positivity and the message of change and the looting. In Center City, some businesses bouncing back quickly. Bar Bonbon had some broken windows, but is taking orders. And grateful staff who were inside are okay. We can replace the windows. We can clean up. We can replace any bottles stolen. We can't replace them. On Chestnut Street, Blue Soul Shoes is boarded up. Black owned, written on the outside. Owner Steve Jameson is trying to figure out when it will feel safe to take them down, not knowing what will happen next. I understand it. I do. I don't condone it by any stretch of the imagination. I don't, but I understand it because I'm black, but I'm also a business owner. I, under I get, I get both sides. I really do. I grew up poor. I get it. I get it all, you know, but, but we have to just, we got to understand at some point, at some point it has to stop. It really does because you're, you're really going beyond what you can even recover from if it continues. And he says that that may come from the community. It may come from community members standing together and saying we're not going to let this happen. He stood outside his own business uh, on Saturday night and uh, prevented people from getting in. And another note on City Blue that we were talking about, uh, they got one of those PPP loads and were able to pay their employees, but that is now running out. They didn't think there would be any uh, interruption in people's pay because they were going to be opening up again. But now that is in question. So we don't know when, what their timeline will be now for opening up. And I want to swing you uh, around again and just uh, let you see what's happening here. Uh, we've got now police and National Guard both lined up together. Earlier today, we saw a line of police and a line of National Guard. And now you see them sort of woven in together. Uh, as Keith mentioned, some of those National Guard troops did leave the area, so there are fewer of them here. Uh, but we, we see, interestingly, um, sort of a, a mixture of the police and National Guard troops. And then if you swing around, you'll see around City Hall, we also see um, officers standing guard in other various spots. A couple there, again, with these metal barricades that keep them in, keep us out for whatever may come as they prepare uh, for uh, what might happen this evening. Jim, back to you. And so much uncertainty for those shop owners, Lauren Make. We know you've been sort of checking in with them, and, and they don't know what's going to happen in the days to come. And this is night three of this. How many more nights will the city of Philadelphia and other surrounding areas have to endure this? Lauren Make, thanks so much. We'll check back in with you.